last week we talked about um, these fall feasts. And the feast that um, we, we started with was the Feast of Trumpets. And uh, the Feast of Trumpets, we talked about some of its prophetical insights. Um, about rapture. We're going to talk about that again today. Um, there's the natural. Remember, the natural is always given us to teach us of the spiritual or the supernatural. It's always an example. In uh, Bible study today, we were talking about the exodus, you know, the departure. And it's a picture of rapture also. Even when God took his people and brought them to a promised land, someday God's going to come back for his church. He's going to take them to a promised land, right? So, um, it's, it's all a picture. It is, it's always all a picture. That's why the Bible says that we um, need to be mindful and, and we don't want to disregard these feasts because they're pictures, right? That's the book of Colossians. They're pictures of things to come. They're shadows. They're pictures of things to come. So um, we want to start today... In uh, the book of Exodus, we're going to go to chapter 19. God has done this great work, this great miracle. He brought the children out of Egypt. Egypt is the world, right? It's a picture of the world. They're all in bondage. They're all slaves to the world. Um, all their freedoms, all their liberties have been taken away. And this is a picture of you and I sometimes, right? Because these guys are in their rut so bad. You know, they're, they've been in prison for 400 years, you know. Um, uh, and once you're in this state for so long, you get accustomed to where you're at. You know, your miseries just become a way of life, you know. You get up in the morning, you're tired and your bones hurt. And you get up and you do it all over again the next day and the next day and the next day. And you don't even realize that maybe there's something better. You know, maybe there's something better. Maybe there's something that's easier. Maybe there's something that's not as taxing as what my life is. But we get so accustomed to it, you know, in this rut. You know, we just keep walking that rut. And we keep, and we don't realize that we're sinking. I always say, the only difference between a rut and a grave is the depth. Is how deep your rut is. It's the only difference. And you get down so far, you can't see the top no more. This is where Israel was. They're just in this rut. There, Moses calls them out, and, um, and they, don't want to, they don't even want to go. I mean, they're, they're happy where they're at. They're happy being slaves. They're content being slaves. And don't realize that there's something better. So Moses, with the strong arm of God, pulls them all out of Egypt, right? And... Now God, they've seen him part the sea. They've seen him destroy Egypt's army. They've seen him destroy. And now God brings them to Mount Sinai. Now this is a picture. We talked uh, about a Jewish wedding, how a Jewish wedding would operate. Um, when a man would meet a woman. We used me and Margie last week. And we talked about that. I met Margie, and she's just so sweet and beautiful, and I just thought, man, I'm just going to spend the rest of my life with Margie. So I invite her to my father's house, right? I bring her to my daddy's house, and we sit down, and we, we make an agreement for our marriage. We make our marriage covenant right at this time. And um, I said last week, I thought, well, you know, I got my cute little honey over here, and, um, and uh, I... I I got, I'm going to take over daddy's farm, right? Sure. So we need kids. And I want, you know, she's got great birthing hips. You know, I, I figured at least 10 of them, you know, at least 10. But would you have 10 kids with me? Oh, yeah. Yeah? I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're going to have a big family. So she agreed to that. Y'all heard her. Right. Y'all heard that. And, um, and, and she said, what did you expect of me? Kids. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I expect of you. What do you expect of me? Oh, lots of money. Lots of money. All right. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Daddy's working late. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> that's right. So we got our agreement made. This is, this is the oath that we have. I'm going to do this for her. 
and she's going to be the mother of my children, and um, I want to, her to cook my meals, and I want her to clean, and I want her to, and I got this list, and she's got her list for me. So we do this. We take, uh, a, Dad would get out a glass of wine, and he put, because wine always symbol, symbolic of the blood, right? Wine is always symbolic of blood, and the Bible says there's life in the blood. Life is always in the blood. So we're going to take this cup, symbolizing blood, and I'm going to drink of it, and I'm going to give it to my betrothed. Legally, right now, as soon as she drinks of this, we are legally married. We're not allowed to be physical yet, right? We're not allowed to be physical, but we're legally married. That's why Joseph had to divorce Mary when she was found to be with child. Had to legally divorce her. Right? And that's why he wanted to put her away secretly. Because according to the law, she had to be stoned to death. And Joseph didn't want to kill his, his betrothed. So, we are legally bound. Now, I'm going to leave. And I'm going to go to my father's house and think, Hey, Dad, uh, we're planning on ten kids. You know, so we need a big house. We need all these rooms. We need everything. So, I'm, we're going to start building. Me and my father, we're going to start building because someday I'm going to get my bride. Someday I'm going to come get my bride. She, on the other hand, she's preparing her life. She's preparing. She's getting, oh, I know he wants a lot of kids. I'm, we need, I'm going to get some linens. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get that. And she's working. She's working towards her future because she knows someday her betrothed, her love, is coming for her. So she's working, and I'm working, right? That's why Jesus said, I go away. You know, in my Father's house are many mansions. I go up to that place for you. And if I go away, I'm going to come back, right? I'm going to come back, and I'm going to get you all to myself. He's building the rooms to the house, right? So we, as the betrothed of Christ, we're busy about our loves business, right? We go about and we tell people about the salvation of Jesus Christ, that you don't have to die in your sins, that there's something better. Get out of the rut. Get out of the rut. Get out of the rut. You know, there's, there's, you can stay in that grave all you want, but there's life outside of it. There's life outside of it, right? So God just brought all his, this family out of Egypt. And now he's sitting here with his betrothed. And this is a, a, a beautiful picture of a, a wedding, you know, the betrothal. But it's also a picture of rapture. And I want you to see them both. Remember, the natural is always given for the supernatural. Someday God's going to come. He's going to come get his bride, right? He's going to come get it. Okay. Exodus chapter 19. <coughs> Remember the feast that we're at. We are in the Feast of Trumpets. <clears throat> now it says here, we're in Exodus chapter 19. We're going to start with verse 3. And Moses went, unto God, went up unto God, and the Lord called him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. That's a clue for the future. Now, he brought them, right? They walked on dry land. The next time we go out, we're going through the air. Eagles' wings, right? Eagles' wings, okay? Now, therefore... If you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Remember 1 Peter chapter 2 says you are a peculiar people. You're a chosen generation, a holy nation. He's just repeating what God told, uh, God told Moses right there. He's just repeating it. Okay. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. First Peter chapter 2, 
Revelation chapter 1 says the same thing, that you're a kingdom of priests to me, right? These are the words which thou shalt speak to the children of Israel. So he's standing before a God, and this is being dictated to Moses by God himself. It's not inspired by the Holy Spirit. This is a dictation. That's what's different about the first five books. It's a dictation where everything else is an inspiration, right? Still came from God, but this was a dictation. Came right from his voice. So Moses, verse 7, so Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words, words which the Lord commanded him. And the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do, or I do. You stand before the altar, you say, I do. And this is what they're saying, we do. And Moses returned the words uh, of the people to the Lord. Now, if I'm going to come and I'm going to betroth Margie, and we're going to... We're going to get married, right? And uh, we've got our agreement. We've got everything. So now the time's getting close, or we're going to go, even when we would go make this meeting, first thing we would do is take a bath. I just come out of the, I just come out of the pig pen. I don't want to stay in front of her, you know, smelling like the hog house, right? Or the cattle, or whatever animals, right? So the first thing they always did is go take a bath. And what do you do when you get done taking a bath? You put on clean clothes, right? So to a Jewish person, the first thing they would do, they always had this white garments. Now prior to this, they could never wear this until you were wed. Okay, it's called the kittle. And, and I would have the clothes, but since I didn't have a commitment to anyone, I couldn't wear it. So I would finally... I'm going to make my, uh, uh, go get engaged or get married to her because regardless, if we can't come together physically, we're still bound by our covenant, right? Marriage is a covenant. So I would come to Margie and I would bathe, right? And put on some nice smelling stuff and everything like that. You know, something other than the pig pen or the hog pen or the barns and, you know, uh, there ain't, there ain't much anointing oil out there. I just got to tell you. <laughs> so I put on this, this cologne. I got this kittle on. I got a new clothes. And I come before my bride. Now she does the same thing. Why do you think baptism is so important to us? We're not saved by baptism, right? We are saved by grace through faith and that not of yourself, the gift of God and not of works, lest any man should boast, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, right? That's how we're saved. Then why do I got to get baptized? Because I made a covenant with God, and now I got to get clean and come back up. Because son, now I'm, gonna, so I'm waiting for my groom to come get me. I'm getting, waiting for him. God, it always freaked me out before I really understood this, that, man, I don't want to marry a dude. I don't want to marry a guy. I'm, I'm as straight as a narrow. I'm so narrow-minded I can look through a keyhole with both eyes open. I don't like that. I'm a straight shooter. And then for me to, to imagine marrying a man always bothered me. It always did. Until I realized something. God's after my heart. Regardless of if it's a man, if it's a woman, or anything. God's coming for a church. He's coming for his church. The church is his bride. I'm part of the church. So I don't care if I'm talking from me being man to God, right? Our Father, I'm part of the bride, I'm part of his family, and that's all I care about, right? I'm part of the family of God. It was my lack of understanding that, that, that really distressed me, okay? So now I come before God, I got all my new clothes, I got all my new garments, and I'm waiting, I'm waiting, right? Now look at what Israel does here, okay? <clears throat> Verse nine. And the Lord said to Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, okay? That th thick cloud was called the hoopah. It's 
called the hoopah. All right? This is what you would stand under these veils when you would come for your bride. When you would come for your bride. It's not the betrothal. That's the ketubah. This is the hoopah. I'm getting married. Now we can have intimacies. We can have intimacies, right? I'm not just talking about physical intimacies. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, you ever notice that when uh, you find, you fall in love with whoever you're falling in love with, guys, girls, girls, guys, whatever, whatever you fall in love with, you know the first thing most people want to do? Let's go out to dinner. Let's go out to dinner. Because when we sit at the dinner table and I take my sweetie here out to dinner and we sit down and we just sit there and we just talk, you're so beautiful. You really are. And we sit there and we just talk and I, I, you know what I do? I open up my heart to this woman. And you know, she does, she does the same thing to me. So there's intimacies at a dinner table, right? Just to sit and eat. Why do you think the Bible says we're, we're going to have come to the marriage supper of the Lamb? There's intimacies there. There's intimacies there. I couldn't have it before, but now I can. And what that means is now that I belong to the body of Christ, and I belong to him. There should be some intimacies between me and God. I can tell him my heart. I can give him my heart. And God's going to give me his heart. He's going to show you his will for you. Isn't that amazing? He's going to show me his will. So <clears throat> he came in this thick cloud. And that the people may hear when I speak with thee. Just like at the dinner table. And believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the Lord, uh, the, the words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and sanctify them today. Right? That means clean up. Clean up. Right? Clean up today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes. There's that wedding garment that we're supposed to put on. We go and sanctify, we all get cleaned up, we put on that sweet smell and stuff on our face, slap it on here, slap it on there, and then we put on the clean clothes. Why? The king is coming. The king is coming. Okay. And be ready against the third day. Be ready for the third day. You see, most Jews got married on the third day. Day one, God made light. Saw the light. Oh, light's good. Evening, morning, next day. Day two, he divided the firmament. Waters from the ground, waters to the sky, right? Saw that, it was good. Day three comes along and he does something different that's not on any other day. First, he divided the waters. He made separated dry ground. And the Bible says, this is Genesis chapter one, day three, he divided the waters of the ground and he made dry land appear and he called the dry land earth. Now there wasn't all the continents, it was only one continent because the Bible says he gathered all the waters into one place. And if the waters are all in one place, then the land must also be in one place. Makes sense, right? So he did that, he saw the land, he said, that's good. And he blessed it. He said, that's good. And then he made the herbs to grow, the grass, the trees, everything. He made that on the third day. And he looked again. He said, that's good. It's the only day of the week where he said, it's good twice. He blessed it twice. So most Jews will get married on the third day, Tuesday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, because it's the only day you get two blessings, one for the bride and one for the groom. Isn't that neat? <clears throat> go to, I'll go to John chapter 2. It's the only place you're going to find <coughs> the marriage of Canaan, where Jesus did his first miracle, as Sandy said today in Sunday school. John chapter 2, verse 1 says, And the third day there was a marriage. On the third day. So this is when we go back to Exodus and we see be ready for the third day. This is a picture of a wedding. This is a picture of a wedding. Does that make sense? Bible says uh, we know that when things make sense, seek no other sense. 
Verse 11, and be ready. Now we're in Exodus, again, chapter 19, verse uh, 11. And be ready against the third day. For the third day, the Lord will come down in the night of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves that you do not go up to the mount, nor touch its border of it, nor touch the mount. And, and he that touches the mount shall surely be put to death. There shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. Now listen to this. When the trumpet soundeth long. There you go. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall, look at the words, come up. It didn't say come to the mount, because they're already at the mount. It didn't say come to the mount. It says thou shalt come up to the mount. You're going up. When we hear the sound of that trump, we're going up. The dead in Christ will rise first, but we who are alive and remain will be called up together and meet him in the air, right? Right? We're going to go up. Look at Isaiah. Isaiah 26. This beautiful, beautiful passage here. Isaiah 26. I'm going to start with verse 19. It says... Thy dead men, sh men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Isn't that awesome? Awake and sing, you that dwell in the dust, for thy dew is as the her dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. The dead in Christ shall rise. Then we who are alive and remain will be called to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Right? Right? 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers. Ooh, thou, that's a wedding thing, isn't it? Come into thy chambers and shut the door about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little while until the indignation be passed. That word indignation means tribulation. Be up here before that tribulation be passed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, and the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. But for us, the bride of Christ, he says, come up here and hide as it will for a little while. You know what's so neat? We know the tribulation lasts for seven years, right? Daniel talks about the last week, um, 70 weeks of tribulation, and a week is a week of years, so it's seven years. But when the Feast of Trumpets happen, and they blow that trumpet, they blow it really hard. They're going to blow 100 trumps throughout the day. Trumpets are going off all the time. And we talked about the different kinds of trumps, how the tekiah, the tekiah is a long piercing. It means to pierce the drum. Literally what the tekiah means. To, to rattle your ears, you know, the long drum. And this goes. And uh, uh, the shedekin means to, would be three short blasts that rise in tone. And, um, and the shevarin is uh, nine quick little blasts. And then the last one, the last one is called the tekiah. As you, you inhale with everything you can inhale, and you blast. It's called the great blast, or like we just read, it's the long blast. It's the last blast on the Feast of Trumpets. When it's all said and done, we're going to give one great big last blast, and the dead in Christ is going to rise. I'm telling you, the dead in Christ is going to rise, Right? And that's what it means. You ever hear something so loud? Well, that was so loud I could wake the dead. That was so loud, <laughs> you know, rattled my ears. And some days it's going to do that. The dead in Christ are going to rise. It's going to wake the dead, right? So that's called the tekiah hadugulah. It's the long last blast at the end of the feast. <gasps> Ooh, and you blow till you're out of breath. Isn't that something? 
You're out of breath. You know what? Everyone in the grave is out of breath. But it's coming, right? It's coming. The dead in Christ is going to rise first. Then we who are alive and remain. So this is what this is a picture of. Okay. So <clears throat> when the trumpet sounds long, they shall come up to the mountain. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes, right? Got clean, got baptized, put on their new clothes. And he said to the people, be ready against the third day. Be ready against the third day. There's always life on the third day, right? Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. Come not at your wives, right? Come not at your wives, leave her alone. You got other better things to do than that. And it shall come to pass on the third day, in the morning, that there were thunders and lightnings, right? So the Bible says, I'm coming back. So there's going to be lightnings in the, we'll, we'll see the lightnings, the sky break in the sky. We're going to see it, right? Lightnings and thick clouds rolling them out. And the voice, the voice of a trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. It was that loud. It shook them in their boots. And I'm telling you, if you ever hear the voice of God, when I told you when my brother died, my brother Bob, and that voice spoke to me and said, he's not here right now. The, 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 the voice, the reverberation of God's voice, it penetrates your body and just goes right through. It just shakes you. The voice of trumpet, exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trouble, and Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the foot or neither part of the mount. They were at the foot of the mount. And Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof, now this is the smoke is the hoopah, right? Thereof ascended as the smoke of a serpent, of a furnace, and the whole mount quake greatly, right? Now look at this. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded along and waxed louder and louder, the tekiah, hadagulah, Moses spoke and God answered him by a voice. Look at this, verse 20. And the Lord came down and Moses went up. Look at this. The Lord came down upon the Mount Sinai, the top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up. So he heard a long, great big blast. God came down and Moses went up. And that ain't a picture of rapture. I don't know what is. God came down and Moses went up. And that's what's waiting for us. That's what we, This is why this feast time is so important. Remember... The Feast of Tabernacles is the seventh, the seventh feast. There's seven sides. Two on this side, two on this side, two on this side. That's six. The seventh side of what's inside. And that's why these fall feasts are so important. Because it's the time of the year when we look inside ourselves and, and, and ask God, what? What, what can I do different? What's wrong? What, 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 what adjustments can I make? Maybe I'm great. Maybe, 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 I'm, maybe I'm right where I need to be. And God says, hey, go, go, go speak to Margie. And since I'm, since I'm so finely tuned in God, and that's what God wants, is I can come to Margie and say, Margie, um, Lord laid you on my heart today. Can I pray for you? And she might say, yeah, pray for me. I have, I have, I have something that's on my heart. All right. Well, now we opened up, right? And, I might, and she might say, my sister Joni. My, my problem is, is it with me. I'm okay. My sister Joni has, has so many faults. I said, well, what's her fault? <laughs> well, she don't make pies like she should. <laughs> I deserved that, didn't I? <laughs> so we're going to work towards that so she makes pies. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to buy her a brand new pot pan. Anyhow. <laughs> so God might move me to a place because now my heart is right with God because I've been busy 
for the last time leading up to this Feast of Trumpets of looking on the inside, right? And realizing I got a deficit here or realizing I don't. Maybe God's going to lay someone else on my heart so I get their deficit brought back up, right? How many of y'all here are perfect? Any of uh, No? Well, you're all honest today. That's great. And um, <laughs> none of us are, right? This is a... This is a pilgrimage for every one of us. We're all on the same journey, right? So let's go to, wow, my time goes five fast. Numbers, the book of Numbers. <coughs> Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. God gives instructions for everything. Now this is one of the names, this general assembly is another name because there is no name for rapture in the Bible. Rapture doesn't appear in the Bible. Bible doesn't appear in the Bible, right? So this is the calling of a general assembly. And this also is a picture of rapture. He's going to say, take the two silver trumpets. All the other trumpets that you, that you have are trumpets of ram's horns, right? The shofar, right? But this is very specific. You get two trumpets made out of a solid piece of silver and you're going to blow this trumpet, right? Because silver is a picture of redemption, right? It's a picture of redemption. So this is going to call the redeemed. This is to awaken the redeemed, you know? All of us who've got loved ones in, that, that have died. Anybody got loved ones that died? That are sitting there? They're just waiting for the trumpet to blast. They're just waiting, you know? They're waiting their soul and spirit might be in heaven. In heaven, they don't need a body, right? God is spirit, right? To worship God, we must worship in spirit and truth, the Bible tells us. But someday we're going to come back to the earth, right? We're going to rule and reign with them for a thousand years. We come back here, we're going to need a body. So the earth is going to give them a glorified body. It's going to go hit to heaven so that when we return with him, you know, for that millennial reign, we can rule and reign as kings and priests with our Lord and Savior. Amen. We all got a bright future. Every one of us in Christ Jesus, we all have a bright future. So God is going to call the redeemed with this trumpet, right? Now we're going to learn that when he calls the first blasts, boom, 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 the first blast is always to call the princes. Right? The leaders of the group. Because all these tribes are assembled in the north, south, east, and west. Four corners. they are all got different tribes that are, have different locations. And the tabernacle's right in the center of it. Right? This is the group of Israel. So when he would blast the first one, it's to get... The, the Bible's going to say that you were uh, princes, but literally means they're leaders to come to the... Come to the tent of, of the tabernacle. Come, come here. What that is going to mean is at the first trump, because the Bible says at the last trump, the dead in Christ will rise, right? So there's a last trump. There must be a first trump. The first trump is going to wake the dead, right? And then the last trump is going to bring us up together. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So that's why we have two trumps, right? Got to wake the dead, and then he's going to resurrect all of us. So he's going to, the first trump would always be, it's called the awakening. Are you kidding me? It's going to awaken. It's, are you kidding me? So the first one's going to awaken everybody. But the second trump always gave the direction that we're supposed to travel in. Isn't that something? So from a military sense, let's say from a military sense, the first trump would uh, blast and tell, you know, like if uh, the northern tribe is up there, it might take three blasts. The, let's say the north tribe, let, let's say this different. The north tribe gets one blast. Uh, uh, the west, east gets two blasts. South gets three, west gets four. So we'll go boop, 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 and you know who's, who, who he's calling. And then the next time he's going to give a direction, the next time, go either uh, forward or retreat. 
So everything's done by sound, right? It's in the heat of battle, you're waiting for this call. We, we don't have uh, any kind of telecommunications back then, so we, they did it by sound. So the first one is to alert everybody or to awaken everybody. The second blast is always direction. So it's the same thing here in the resurrection. The first one is to waken the dead. The second one is the direction. We're going up, right? It's a to meet, uh, go up, up to the mount of the Lord. The first one's going to wake the dead. The second one is going to bring us up. Numbers chapter 10. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver. Out of a whole piece thou shalt make them, that thou mightest use them for the calling of the assembly. Ooh, he's going to assemble his church, the calling of the assembly. And for the journeying of the camps, we got to take a trip. And when they shall blow them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and thou shalt blow with one trumpet. Then the princes, those that are dead, or I'm just saying the spiritual side, which are the heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves unto thee. And then you shall blow an alarm. Then the camps that lie on the east shall go forward. And when you blow alarm the second time, the camps that lie on the south shall take their journey and shall blow the alarm um, for their journey. So, the first one awakes, the second one is your direction. But when the congregation is to be gathered together, you shall blow, but you shall not sound an alarm. Then the sons of Aaron, the priest, shall blow the trumpets, and they shall uh, be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generations. Okay, so this is what he's saying here. That at the first one, you're going to call the princes, those who are dead, the second one is going, to, uh, is going to say what direction you're going to go to. If you've got to go north, you've got to go south, or if we've got to go up. Okay? Go to Hebrews chapter 12. And Paul's going to give this in a little bit better language that we can understand. Now remember Mount Sinai. They just came off of Mount Sinai. Remember, there's trembling, there's quaking. The earth is moving because God's, God's there. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 18. For you are not come unto the mount that might be touched, that burneth with fire, nor the blackness, nor in darkness, and temptest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words, and the voice that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. For they did not endure that which was commanded. And, and so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Even Moses was shaken in his boots. Now look at verse 22. See, because it says in verse 18, for you are not come to that mountain. You are not coming to that one. We got another one. It's more glorious. He said, but you are come. But you are come to Mount Zion, the heavenly city. And to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly. That's the word we use for rapture. To the general assembly and the church of the first born which are written in heaven and to the God the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect made perfect made perfect that's our future that's our future and that's what feast of trumpets is all about it's what the feast of trumpets is all about it's about an announcement. We're going to announce on them. Right? And we heard that the trump of the voice of words is going to go out and he's going to gather his people up. That's why these feasts are so important, church. 
God came and he died on Passover. He was in the grave during unleavened bread and he rose on first fruits, the first spring feasts. He gave us his Holy Spirit on Pentecost. That was the summer feast. And now we're at the fall feast, which is called the ingathering. He's going to gather in. He's going to gather in, right? He's going to gather in. You know, at the end of this feast, you know what happens? Because they start reading the Torah in the beginning of the year, in, in, in March. And by the time they get here, by the time they get here, they're done. You know what they do? They roll it all back up and they start over. It's a picture of a new beginning. There's a new beginning waiting for us. We have a new beginning in Christ. Old things have passed away. All things are made new. Isn't it beautiful? It's all encoded in these feasts. That's why it's so important for us. I know I, I said a lot and, and I, I hope... Um, you're getting this because if God fulfilled everything in order, he's probably going to continue, right? It only makes sense because trumpets is about calling his church home. And we read it, Isaiah, stay here for a little while till the tribulation's passed, right? So during the Feast of Trumpets, the priests would go into hiding for seven days. Couldn't see him. For seven days, you couldn't find a priest anywhere. We're going to be gone for seven years. That's how long the tribulation will last. Ah, didn't the Bible say we're a kingdom of priests? Didn't it say that? We're a kings of priests? So we're going to be taken out of the way. So what? Judgment can happen. What's the next feast? Atonement. It's all about judgment. Mm. And then after the seven years are passed, we're coming back with the Lord, right? He's going to come back to rule and reign. And what's the next feast after that? Tabernacles, dwelling with God for a thousand years. We're going to, well, it's going to be for eternity, but we're going to be with God. It's all in the feasts. The reason why I want you to know this, church, is so that we're prepared for that day. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe he's going to come next Tuesday. I have no idea. All I know is we have to examine the inside we got to look on the inside, and we got to ready our hearts, right? we got to be ready for his return. We don't want to be one of those sleeping ones that uh, sleeping uh, the, the ten brides, five are wise, five are foolish, five are sleeping, five are ready. We want to be ready to the coming of our Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. You who are out there in TV land, if you don't know all your Lord and Savior... Get to know Jesus. Ask him to come in your heart. Have him be your Lord, be your Savior. We're at 1604 East Main Street in Ottawa, Ohio. Come and we'll show you the way. Amen? Amen. Everybody get something today? Yes. yes. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. King of kings, Lord of lords, Father God, there's none like you. Father God, I pray that as these dear saints, oh, as my dear saints, leave, O oh Lord. I pray that you build a fire inside of everyone. Fire the Holy Ghost. Let it rule and reign in you. Let them ready their hearts. Make them blabbermouths for Jesus. Empower them, Lord God, with your spirit. Ready the heart. Ready the mind. Every part of our lives, Lord God. So that when we hear that trumpet sound, We'll be ready at a moment's notice to meet our Lord in the air. We thank you and praise you, Father God, for all things. In Jesus' name. Amen.